If you don't know, you are on your own. <laughs> if you don't know who you are, you're on your own as a child of God. And if you don't know where you are going to, whether you are walking in glory or whether you are walking to the north or to the south or to the east or to the west, you're on your own. So yes, this is Minister Mark and um, soon I'll be done with my evangelism school, so I'll be called an evangelist. <laughs> I am already one anyway, so I'm not uh, so keen about titles. I just want to do my Lord's bidding because my own ultimate goal is to hear my darling Jesus say, good and faithful servant. Hey, yeah. So when I'm giving an assignment, me, I take my assignment seriously. Whether it's to one or to multitude, to children, to widows, to adults, to prisoners, to whoever. This is one of those assignments. Share your notes from church. Hmm. I just thank my God that he just knows me and he knows when to give me, you know, to just make me to rest. Both physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, everything. So I'm so grateful. This particular assignment was just for a short season. Hey, Papa, bless your neighbor. Hey, what I will continue next year, I don't know. But I'm so grateful. So I really... Um, want to encourage us you know his children his servants as we continue to walk in glory because that's how we are supposed to walk as children of god right very conscious of who we are and what we carry in us and it can only be in glory because we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth so you cannot have all of that in you and then you are walking like sad and all of those things when the things come you will just know those tools to you know deal with them process them and deal with them 
and express them if need be and then move on and that's what our service was about today it was just like it was so timely i mean hey when you leave the house with something on your heart and then you get to church and they're talking about how to deal with things that get to your heart and my testimony was actually how i dealt with something that got to my heart it's like there could never be a better coincidence and so i'm so excited to share my notes today i got in and they came and said it's time to eat i was like no 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 you both should keep my own i have to share my notes and i don't want to sleep before i do this i don't want to eat i don't want nothing i just want to first share these notes and i really really pray that someone is blessed someone who either doesn't fellowship at faith bible church or who might not have those i don't know it's seven and two hours to watch the whole service so that will encourage you to watch that's why i put the link there because my notes are not covering everything and the lord can minister to you with anything both at the beginning or at the end so it's not i'm just sharing my notes as part of my assignment and when it will be time to stop sharing i will stop sharing it doesn't mean i don't make notes i'm a writer so i love writing so i'm always except i'm i'm, I'm in the spirit i'm not physically able to do notes but i do notes a lot of the times i just do them for myself you know okay so um this is my prayer father god and i know that you holy spirit will just do your thing and take over all for your glory papa and all in your mighty name jesus amen ah my god i hope we are walking in power and in glory and we are living a life of favor at the end of service today our mother prayed for those who want the favor of the lord upon their lives and um, well, my my name is already my favor so um it's not okay but i do receive anyway i always want so i will appreciate some more but there's still a lot i have to do in my father's vineyard so um i thank god for what is already and what is coming um yeah i own no rights to that music right it's by sinach okay you know who you are walking in power we are chosen generation and the world is groaning in anticipation for sons of god to take position there's no more time for procrastination we are getting to the end and you can you imagine all the shenanigans and all the i don't even know if i'm calling madness all the whatever that is going on in the world i mean we are losing our children including myself we are losing the next generation to all kinds of whatever things like prayer is getting out of their agenda studying the word forget about it um sitting down and listening to good counsel forget about it fellowship forget about it go in command microwave generation good for them clap for them clap for yourselves huh okay -o. when the theme of the message of today was walking in the glory of god to overcome limitations it was in french so i've translated go watch the french version okay so when you are walking in the glory of god it means you are walking in and by the spirit of god and that was just so powerful to hear and to claim knowing that then it's not on it's not my it's not me not my power for example i walked to and fro church today physically i walked but spiritually it wasn't really me because <laughs> if it's me me mark the flesh i wouldn't walk knowing that i have money in my bag to pay a cab but while i was walking i was listening to a message and so the time i used to walk it helped me to stay grounded before i got to church to the point when by the time i got there i was really really like settled in my spirit about the issue i had in my had early this morning and everything and when i left church i still chose to walk because i wanted to listen to a few chapters of the audio book of the prophet jeremiah you know you keep discovering new things all the time so it's not just about going to church it's about the fellowship it's about the worship it's about the 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 the, the everything let me call it the intercourse and it can start from the moment i wake up and it does start from the moment i woke up i wake up i was up at one for example i prayed and stopped i slept by two and then i was up again by i don't know maybe 4 30 and then I, so it, it's like the whole 
In short, you have to be in the spirit all the time. And if the spirit of God lives in you, then it's the spirit that leads you. And so you just do well to relax. You're not the one driving the car. So what's the issue being so scared each time if you see a speed break? As they use the example of speed break in church a lot today. You see a speed break or if you see somebody crossing the road, you distract the driver if you are there each time. Hey, watch out. Don't you see? Slow down. No, no, no. You need to relax. You might be sleep. Some people sleep when the driver is driving. Yes, I slept. That's coming back to your own the other day. It was kind of like an early, very early morning, 2.30 a.m. So, yeah, and I was there like, I got to the park at about 10 so it's when i got into the bus that i could sleep because while i was waiting i was alert i was praying it was a new experience for me so actually when you are walking in the glory of god and that means that is you are walking in the spirit and walking by the spirit then you are walking that kind of way like Go here, go here, go there, go there, don't go there, don't go there. Speak, speak, shut up, shut up, sing, sing, don't sing, don't sing. That's the kind of life you live. One of total surrender, obedience. Anyway, trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy. Do you really want to be happy in Jesus? Not in the world though. Because in the world I tried is yeah, yeah. Jara, not no rubbish, no nothing that like happiness is fake. Okay. When you walk in the glory of God, you equally receive the power to overcome all limitations that come up in all aspects of your life. Because limitations will come. Hey, and it's not like they'll come in January and we are done with 2023. They'll come January for 31 days, 30 days. How many days January has? I cannot remember. Every month, every day, the limitations, there will be something. Something. But when you know who you are and you know what you are walking it you're walking in then you receive that power that's why I, I i was so happy to even remember this song by sinners like i'm walking in power that means that something will come like something came on my heart this morning or it has been on my heart like since friday and i've been praying and thinking 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 first of all just thinking thinking nah, the moment i started praying about it last night that's when i received that power to express myself the way I express myself and to continue to pray about it and then to get healed about it only in the space of maybe say six hours or four hours or stuff. It's only the spirit of God that can do that. And to even have already received the response by now, only the spirit of God can do that. Limitations as the minister uh the woman of God explained Reverend Nicole Meno. I, I learned her name today, Dr. Nicole Meno. Limitations are obstacles that prevent you from attaining your fullest potential as purposed by God, like speed breaks. And there are some places there, uh, like <laughs> going to the village, you know, where I go to, I'll be going there again this weekend. They have just put speed break there for. Um, impromptu and healing police control in on the road to the village so there are two breaks two police control when you see those speed breaks you already know that they're going to control you there will be a stick somewhere down there so uh, if you don't want to go to the control you tell your client to go down and walk as if that they don't have no business with you and you you are just passing as an even you don't want to buy your supplies from the city so they are not going to they, they say the control when you carry a passenger uh whatever what i don't know so and, and you have to pay your way through so can you imagine that's such a limitation because somebody is not going to do his business again or cannot business because does not want to face that limitation you have to give them 500 francs each time how much money is that and so the prices have gone up to go to the village you know it's four thousand francs on a bike for 45 minutes that's a limitation am i going to stop going there uh, is, is the guy going to stop doing his business? Am I going to go down and walk? You have to look for a way to overcome that limitation. I know why I'm going there. It's an assignment from my father. So I'm not going to stop going there because prices have gone up. I'm going to pray and Papa is going to increase the source, the money, the resource, so that I can go. This weekend will be my last time this year 
to go there to do evangelism with the kids. We are rounding up with our play and everything. I don't know what next year will bring. So if I have to continue going there for whatever other assignment, I will. In spite of that limitation. And he might even just overtake it, uh, or, or remove it completely. Eventually, those people will leave that place. On other villages, they have left, you know, and stuff like that. So that's in a nutshell what we're looking at. So the spirit of limitations frustrates and costs us a lot most of the time. Because I will still use this example of the village. The, mini, the woman of God used her own examples. And it's a good thing to use your own examples because we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So don't hesitate to share. Like this morning, the Lord humbled me. He said, go and share that testimony. I tried to help Papa. Go and share no peace on I, I went and gave my day to share the testimony for me it was like oh, small testimony blah, blah, blah. Ah. you want to you want to bang it you want to uh, you want to be stubborn no papa no papa <laughs> so um it's a spirit actually this limitation like in the village why would they come and put police controls too on the road to a small village that have three thousand people on an entire road with all those stones and everything and then they don't control nothing. Nobody has asked my ID card since I've been going to that village. Oh, just stop, remove your money, give your money, and let go. That can be so frustrating, and it is. Because the bike man will spend the rest of the journey grumbling about it. I don't blame him. Out of even if it's four thousand, you put uh, you buy two liters of oil, one five, because one liter is seven fifty. You spend one thousand on the road, that's two five already. How much do you have? And for me also. So it is frustrating and it costs you time. And yes, money, of course. Because if you if you if you don't slow down when there's a speed break, you speed, you break your bike, break your car, you have to go to the mechanic, you're frustrated, you spend money that you did not even plan to spend. Oh, there's a lot of those things. So Jesus came to break these limitations in the lives of the children of God. Even just by that peace, not just just, but that peace that surpasses human understanding. Even while I'm going through all of that challenge for, of going to the village, I have peace in my heart and I am happy. And I know that there's nothing that I will not overcome in that journey. Because it's about Jesus and I've got Jesus in me. It's that I'm walking in that spirit. Wow. So from the beginning of the world, there have been limitations. And many are those who have overcome this through their faith in God. Some examples of such people in the Bible include Moses, Joseph, Job, Gideon, Paul, um, you know, so many people. And uh, one of those who did not overcome a limitation which came in the form of a temptation to sin landed us in all this trouble that we are today. That's Oga Adam, you know, uh, and his Nyango if that is why um when um the woman of god was looking at causes of limitations in our lives as children of god the very first one was sin uh-huh and she used oga adam and nyango if their example taking from genesis chapter 3 verse 10 and she says that one of the things that sin does is that it limits us from accessing god because we are now ashamed so we need to fortunately today we have the mercy hey mercy seat we can approach the throne of grace boldly oh, if we believe in jesus so but just imagine adam and eve didn't have that opportunity at the time so this is what happened in genesis chapter 3 verse 10 and he said adam said i heard the voice in the garden and i was afraid because i was naked and i hid myself how did he know that he was naked how did Adam know? Was that the day that he became naked? Before he was having his sweet fellowship with the Lord all the time, in the cool of the day, how was your day, all of that. He did not look at that, that, that distraction. But now because he has seen, he's so self-conscious. <sighs> I know now, I know sin. Uh, if not for the grace of God. So, there had to be some good help. 
the Lord had to take leaves and fashion something and clothe them just to show them how he is a forgiving God. When you are conscious of your sin, you go before the mercy seat. There's no way now. He'll forgive you and just give you a new chance. And just what a loving God we have. The second cause of limitation in our lives is laziness. And scripture clearly condemns laziness. The scriptures here, we have Proverbs chapter 13, verse 4. And um, the soul of the slugger desire it and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. So slugger is another name for lazy man. And so he so desires. So yes, he desires. But he's lazy, so he has nothing because you just desire to sit there, get up in the morning and sit in your neighbor's house and be chasing. Yeah, you want to go to the market. Yeah, you want to eat rice and stew and plenty meat. No, you have to be diligent. You have to be hardworking. You have to do something, right? Okay, so your desires can as well be a limitation. Don't just stop with those desires. Do something. And then um, Proverbs 12, verse 11 and verse 12, verse 14, sorry. If we don't leave our comfort zone, nothing will happen. That's just what I was saying. You have to do something. So um, don't say that I did not know. Because whoever loveth instruction, loveth knowledge. But he that hated reproof is brutish. Okay, that was just an aside. But we are going to see that it falls in place somewhere. He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread. That's verse 11. But he that followed vain persons is void of understanding. I don't know how butterflies get into my room. Welcome. So you have to till your land. Uh, you pray, pray, pray. I don't go and till your land and see how uh, corn will grow on that land. Verse 14. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. And the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. So what comes out of your mouth and what? comes out from the labors of your hand will be good if you put them to good use right okay another hindrance is ignorance you say you don't know uh, look even legally speaking ignorance of the law is no excuse now what are we going to talk about what the bible says hosea chapter 4 verse 6 it's very important we quote it all the time my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou has rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Hey, God provoke. So we not only can we, we, we cannot even say we don't have knowledge, but we have and we reject. We have access to the Bible, we have access to the word of God, we have access to prayer forums and opportunities all of that we reject because well uh, all kinds of reasons right so we have rejected knowledge well i don't believe in that thing. kind of jesus thing i'm going away are you the only christian around da, 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 da. okay fine what is even your own way of being a christian can you are you even a you know let let me not be the one to try to you be your own and you know there's no way you can start and you don't ascend there's no way because when you start, the more you draw closer to God, the more you know Him. The more He will help you, the more you ascend, the more your life will be transformed, your mind will be renewed. So it's not about Maria Banga, it's not about any other person. It's about you and your relationship with Jesus. So don't say you, you don't know. You don't want to know. Or you are hearing and you don't care. Because you are looking at the human. You are not looking at Jesus. Oh. You are not setting your eyes there. Oh. Okay, so Psalm 119 verse 130 says, The word of God gives light and understanding to the simple. There's nothing like I did not go to school. Charles Pungeon did not go to much school, oh, but Charles Pungeon, my God, I, before I even knew who he was, I was using his devotional. Then now I know that he's one of the great, great, you know, and uh, Kachin Kluman did not go to much school. A lot of people in those days did not, they did not have the doctorate and all of those things. Yet the word of God became a light, a lamp, it's a lamp onto our feet. The feet of anybody, whether you have PhD, you don't have PhD, you have this and that. Simple. To the point where you understand it in simple terms, 
sometimes I read, for example, I discuss I, Psalm 62 verse um, 10 or 8 recently on Friday. I think I've read it before. I've read it before. But I did not get it the way I got it on Friday. And that was my testimony today. So, uh, if you say you are ignorant, uh, that means that you don't want to study your word. Because if you read Psalm 119, the Holy Spirit is going to open your heart to this scripture, Psalm 130. And then to the other scripture that you continue reading. And you see the word of God will now give you light and understanding. So you will now know. And when something comes to you like what came to me, you will stop, you will think. And then you say, let me first just take it to my father. You know, that's his chair there. This is the floor here. Yeah. <laughs> Pray, cry, do whatever. And then, Papa, who do I talk to? Who do I share this burden with? He will tell you. And then peace starts coming back. And the last limitation that we looked at in church today was fear. I remember there's a book I wrote. What is the worst case scenario? Fighting the fear within mindful of my mental challenges. At that time I was going to just so, so much. And then the last fear I looked at was a fear of dying. And in half a page, I had dealt with that fear. And I'm no more afraid of dying. So fear is such a cause of limitations in our lives. It is an antidote of faith and has no place in a child of God's life. Fear in all its dimensions. Fear to start, fear to continue, fear to fail, fear to whatever, fear to love, fear to marry, fear to stay single. Fear You know yourself. Fear of what people will say. People, are they the ones who gave me the assignment? Somebody once asked me, eh, can you tell me more about the assignment? I was like, no. It's, uh, I didn't feel it in my spirit like to tell this person. And then what, I would tell them and then what? They will tell me what tell me what they think about it, whether I should go or I should not go. No, 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 no. I don't even give them that opportunity. Okay. After all, is this more important than what God says? Numbers 13 verse 2, the commanders of the spies sent to Jericho. Remember, they came back and said, uh, Send down men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel, of every tribe of their fathers, shall send ye a man, everyone a ruler among them. Sorry, I said Jericho, it was Canaan. I was already thinking about the victory. <laughs> how the walls of Jericho came down. Yeah, and you know how they came back and 10 of them were like, uh -uh. yes, it's true that in that land there's milk and honey, but hey, the people that are giants, so they will eat also. Whereas God had already said the land I will give to you people. He just wanted you to go and appreciate it and see that with him. Even if there are five kings, like in the case when Lot was taken away, Abraham with his 310 people could go against these people and take back everything because the Lord was with him and he had allies. So what is that fear? So, um, she wound up by encouraging us what we need to focus on. From Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things so we should think on those things not on uh, what is trendy uh, who said what who did what who went to where who got married who did not get married who miscarried who did not miscarry who had about, about the adopted and uh, 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 TikTok and all of those things like that to the point where some people are so hooked a, a child is trying to study but he's dead distracted with that thing eating and the food is falling because he's uh good lord help us so so let us as children of god do that and then um she shared some tips on how to really stay grounded and all of that but i i got it and i didn't really uh, write that on notes yet basically studying the word very important very important very important prayer very important very important very important um having this personal relationship with jesus very important very important you know, making sure that the Lord is holding your hand. Tell my man, Senor, tell my man, hold my hand home. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1 and 2. You know, it is so important because you want backing and you want that security. The real one, not the one where it's just money and bodyguards and all of that. Those people, 
Uh, all those things will fail you now. <laughs> Thus said the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holding. Right hand, no, not even left. They're so secure. If God holds your hand, who can do what? Who can remove that hand? Hey, to subdue nations before him, and I will lose the loins of kings to open before him the two leave gates, and the gate shall not be shut. Yes, because the Lord opens so, and no one can shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Yes, thus said the Lord to his anointed Mary Abanga. Put your name there, claim it, and let nobody tell you that it was only for Cyrus. No, 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 no. It is in the world, and that's what we use today. Replace your name, put your name everywhere you want there in the Bible. Where you see another name, put your name, of course, except for the name of Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit. But any precious promise, claim it. And then she wrapped up uh, by looking at uh, the prayer of Jabez, right? Encouraging us to pray this kind of prayer. And Jabez, Jab, uh, First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou will bless me indeed. So Jabez is praying for blessing because, well, Jabez had that name Jabez first of all because his mother said she brought, he brought her so much sorrow. So he wants God to bless him. Oh, in spite of that, my name, Papa, bless me and enlarge my coast. Papa, may, may I be able to do great things in your name so that when people will see me, see these signs and wonders, they will know that, ah, Maria Banga serves a living God, though. Uh huh. And that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, and it may not grieve me. Yes, I don't want pain, I don't want trouble, I don't want tri tribulations. And uh, Papa, even if they come, oh, may I not be sad about it, oh? may I not feel that my life has ended. Oh? And God granted him that which he requested, like instantly, like the woman with the issue of blood. She said, if only I can touch the hem of his garment she did not care she had nothing to lose anymore she did not care about the people what are those ah, the smell people were instead probably running because oh, what kind of order is that and then she just touched and instantly before jesus even turned around to speak to her she was already hey mama me papa god oh it was such an awesome service today my god my god my god i'm so grateful frankly speaking and so i share in all um in all love, frankly speaking, and I really pray that somebody gets it. I don't know where you worship. I don't know what you hear, where you go to. Uh, but I just know that the Lord speaks to his people. He still does that today. He speaks through his anointed servants. He speaks even to you directly. If you put yourself in that disposition, open heart, where you can receive and he can speak to you about you, about other people. He does that. He did that before. He's still doing it today. Let nobody fool you. It is such a beautiful thing working with the Lord. You know, to the point where whatever humans are saying, it doesn't get to you. Because what matters to you is what God is saying. And he leads you in such a beautiful way. Besides still waters now. So make him your good shepherd. And you shall not want. It's not about material want to. For some people, it is <laughs> they're specialized on that. They're waiting for that. God does not give them a big car. They don't have a testimony. No, me, it's about peace. It's about improving, improving my prayer life. It's about this. It's about that. About healing. It's about love. It's about directing my path. All about that. And of course, providing for me to go and do His bidding, but not for me to show off or be talking. Like I've got a promotion. I've got cars and house and da 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 da. da. That's not me. Each person knows themselves. So do you know who you are? Do you know who whose you are? Do you know who is holding your hand? Do you know whose hand is upon you? Eh? Follow who no roads. Eh, Papa, thank you so much. Oh. Have a wonderful Sunday, everybody. God bless us all.